complexity. And it should be said, the complexity theory, which you flag in your book of the Kaufman type, does not explain these sorts of things. So that mm -hmm. does not cover it. But are you quite sure that there isn't something miraculous? And don't, don't you tremble at the notion of finding that science can go further? Are you not giving up because of maybe an initial belief that you already had that there was a puppeteer up there? No, I'm, I'm not uh, giving up at all. At least I, that's not the way I see it. I see it as, okay. a, I see it as a positive thing. Uh, I'm not, uh, I'm, it's, it's not my, you know, I'm a religious guy, uh, mm -hmm. but I used to think Darwinian evolution was true. Uh, it, was, uh, it wasn't until about 20 years ago when I was, you know, I was 36 at the time that I decided Darwinian evolution didn't do everything. I was taught Darwinian evolution in parochial schools. I'm a Catholic. So I have, you know, I, I could live with theistic evolution as a number of scientists do. And as a matter of mm -hmm. fact, I, I used to think that was true. But now I just don't think it explains the data. I'm, I'm not trying to uh, justify a belief in God or any such thing. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm just, I'm a biochemist. I want to know where, the, where these uh, <laughs> complex molecular machines came from. And it sure doesn't look like they came from a Darwinian process, and from everything I can tell, they have properties that are very similar to design systems in our own world, and, and so I, I just think it's a good hypothesis that, uh, right. that, that they were designed. Uh, if in 50 years somebody comes along uh, with a better idea and shows that, well, no, there's this uh, complex thing that we never thought of, and it, it doesn't uh, involve design, Imagine. Well, well, then bless their heart. They, then they, then then they win. Okay, but that's that's the way science is. And but you can't ignore something because it seems philosophically unpalatable. Uh, Definitely not. And science will get in trouble a whole lot quicker, I think, that way than if it uh, discovers something that uh, seems to put some limit on nature, as as most theories do. Yeah. Just out of a random curiosity, are you going to spend the rest of your active career engaged in showing us things that cannot be explained according to the theory, or is there another aspect of your research? My question is, what is your research if you don't believe in what so many other people believe in? Well, and it, that's a genuine question. Well, uh, it's, it's essentially along the lines of the edge of evolution. If you think that some things are designed, like I do, uh, but if you think not everything is designed, like I do, uh, then where's a good place to draw this edge? Uh, <laughs> I Kind of characterizing nature is a classical scientific activity. Uh, okay. Uh, in the 18, 17, 18, 1900s, uh, chemists would go out and try to find what elements there were. Uh, they just wanted to see what was there. Astronomers would survey the, the skies, see what planets were there. Well, one can ask oneself what design things are here in life and what did not require design, just to kind of get the, the lay of the land. And once we have the lay of the land, then maybe we would be in a better position to go and ask further questions. But right now, I, I think we're, uh, we have to do that first before going on and trying to figure out some way in which a designer might work or, or whether something besides design is, is, uh, uh, is called for. This is an achingly urgent question. I cannot get enough of it. You know what? I'm going to become a biochemist. I almost mean that. I'm going to start at the very beginning and get a degree because I want to work on this. It would be so interesting if it really turned out that we had hit the wall that you're talking about. And yeah. I'm open to the possibility, but boy, what a miracle it would be if we could figure out what the other part is. But you have convinced me completely that the basic Darwin with the beard story, the random mutation, yeah. that won't do. And the people who are going to scoff at your work I highly suspect, and this is a completely irresponsible and arrogant thing for me to say as someone who's not a scientist, I don't think that they're reading you carefully enough. It sounds like they're people who are not thinking about what you're saying. And I regret it because I really do believe The Edge of Evolution is one of the most important books I have read in my entire life. And I hope that other people will actually take the book and read it all the way through. And um, 45 minutes is about the best length for blogging heads, and we have about hit that. Okay. And so um, is there anything else that you wanted to get in before we closed, by the way? 
Um, uh, it, it's, 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 yeah, here's one thing is that a lot of people object to evolution because of their religious values, but you don't have to. Uh, you know, you can object to evolution or Darwinian evolution simply on this on scientific grounds, and that's what I'm trying to do. And and as as you've uh, as you've read, there's there's plenty of, of reason to, to do so. Wow, I chose the wrong career. Thank you <laughs> very much, Michael. This was absolutely my, illuminating. My pleasure. Thank you, John. And uh, I hope we talk again someday. Uh -huh. <laughs>